As iconic as Lady Liberty herself is the fire department of New York. We're on Governor's Island, just off the tip of Manhattan, with the FDNY and a group of researchers who are fighting fire with science. All right, Roy, we're going for ignition. Light it up. How are we doing? Ignition's confirmed. A little bit of smoke. Flames are starting to roll in the ceiling above the couch area. The fire still seems to be growing. This might look like a bunch of abandoned houses, but today it's an extreme lab. Because if you have the same apartment over and over with the same furniture in it, you can have the same fire burn and then change different variables between the apartments to try to figure out how the fire moves, how the fire grows, and ultimately how to stop it. I don't know if there's any absolutes in the world, uh, but fire is physics. We'll clear out the first window on the second floor. And for thank you. Battalion Chief George Healy orchestrates the operations for a 50-strong team of New York's finest. They're fighting 18 controlled fires over 10 days. They want to see how fire reacts to their tactics in all parts of the house, from opening windows to applying water. Fire creates heat, heat creates pressure, and high pressure moves to low pressure. Now, six years ago, that was something I didn't know about. And, and this is my livelihood, and I put people into this structure, and their safety really counts on the fact that I understand it and they know and understand it. 10-4, the fire's already reacting to the additional oxygen, starting to go back into the, uh, the growth stage. Helping him to understand is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. Fire protection engineer Dan Madrakowski gives us a tour of the next and somewhat tacky test room. So you see, here we have a furnished living room. This is the sofa where we're gonna have our ignition. Over here under these newspapers, it's a little humid today, we wanna make sure we get the fire going, so if you lift those up, you'll see the matchbook that we're gonna use to start the fire. That's gonna be the source of our heat to that's, start the fire. Wait, that's it? That's all you're gonna use? That's all we need. How soon are they gonna burn this place down? Actually, we should probably be leaving now. Okay. <laughs> They want to know how hot gases flow out and cool oxygen flows in. Each row house is hardwired with eight video streams. Starting at the top. Thermocouples placed at different heights and locations measure temperature, oxygen depletion, and toxic gases like carbon monoxide and hydrogen cyanide, a byproduct of polyurethane foam found in common couches like these. All those data go to a portable control room just next door. Principally, this series of tests is for firefighters. We're seeing the fire ground has changed. Uh, the fire environment has changed. There's different fuels, the construction methods are different, and as a result, the firefighters' tactics need to change. Modern, energy-efficient homes are tightly sealed. Combine that with synthetic furniture, which requires a lot of oxygen to burn, and you have a ticking time bomb. That now leaves us in a little bit of a predicament because when we show up and we start making openings, we have smoke and smoke is fuel and we have elevated temperatures. There's only one thing in that fire triangle that's missing and it's the oxygen. And the oxygen's a necessary evil to our operations. We have to open up that door. We have to open up that window. But we're gonna have With these that. tests, they're able to open different windows, close doors, and even open vents on the roof to see how the fire builds. Take the glass in the rear. You see how the fire's already become toxic and limited. Even with the front window open. Get the other one. Now we're going to see how our additional ventilation when we arrive on the scene is going to influence that fire. Yeah. And so as firefighters start to break windows now, instead of letting hot gases out and fresh air in, they're letting the oxygen in. That's increasing the heat release rate. The fires are getting larger. And that can be seen by the inferno in the right upper bedroom. Its door is open to the fire downstairs. That's called the flow path. No one could survive this. The bedroom on the left has its door closed. First responders could break that window and still save anyone inside. Oxygen levels are coming down, but it's still out of position now where a firefighter could get in that window and rescue somebody. In this test, a vent in the roof allows toxic gas to escape. Coupled with the application of water, the fire can be contained. So it's going to take some time for the engineers to look at the data. But visually, it appeared that fire reacted favorably to our vertical vent. So we now probably want to be more mindful about timing our ventilation, even on the roof, with application of water. 
There were also concerns that if you introduce water from the outside, that you might cause more harm inside. You might push the fire, you might create more toxic gas, and so we're monitoring for those things as well. As it turns out, introducing water from the exterior doesn't push the fire as previously thought. In fact, it drastically reduces inside temperatures, and that is far more valuable to firefighters than obscuring their view with smoke. That's something that's really been, uh, I think, a surprise to a lot of us. All right, you pour water in the front door. You can see how the fire in the front got extinguished by that water going in the rear window. It dropped from 600 C down to, like, 350 seat, and that's completely nowhere near where they put the water in. So it's about flow path control, controlling ventilation, and applying water from the exterior early in the fire, and then resuming your typical operations. Operations to all units. The uh, test is concluded. We're just in extinguishment from the exterior. And when we sit down as a department and look at our tactics and maybe some adjustments we want to make, they'll be based in science and not based on observation or opinion and we'll have something that we can hang our hat on. So the firefighters are gonna learn all kinds of things from this research, but there's a take home message for us too. If there's a fire in your house, this is what your room's gonna look like if you leave the door open when you go to bed. And this is what your room's gonna look like if you just close the door. So when you go to bed, close the door.